Pentecost. This is the day that we celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes we also call it the birthday of the church. So there will be plenty of doves to go around, lots of red, white, and even tongues of fire, if you can believe it. Sounds of the wind as well. We are thankful for the arrival of the Holy Spirit, and we're thankful that you can join us for this celebration. No matter who you are, where you are on life's journey, you are welcome. Let us now worship the Holy Spirit. God who moved over the deep in a holy breath, come to us this day, Pentecost, arrive in the wind. God who spoke in a bush that was burned but not consumed, come to us this day, Pentecost, arrive in a holy flame. <laughs> God, who is present each time we gather at the table, come to us this day, Pentecost. Arrive in the bread, in the wine, in the conversation and connection. Pour out your Holy Spirit. Set us aflame, but do not consume us. Fill us with holy nourishment. We have arrived this day, Pentecost. We have come to worship. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthenians, Medes, Alamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phygia and Pamphyla, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my Spirit, and they shall prophesy and I will show protents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved.
Christmas to me from pleasantest wind, wind on the sea. You moved on the waters, you called to the deep, and you coaxed up the mountains from the valleys of sleep. And over the disciples were celebrating a festival called Pentecost when suddenly a strong wind blew through the house. Everyone's hair lifted up and there was an amazing noise. They looked at each other. The disciples looked at, at a flame of fire touching him, but no one was burned. The Holy Spirit had come, just as God had promised. The disciples then began to speak in different languages languages that they had never learned, and yet they were able to understand each other. Peter stood up. I want to tell you about Jesus. He reminded everyone what Jesus had taught him. He told them how Jesus died and he lives again. It's time for us to begin a new life with God's Spirit guiding us. The disciples were excited to live differently, guided by God's Spirit. This was the beginning of the Christian church. Hi kids, it's children's time. Come now and give your offering. Today we are going to throw into the plate a big, huge welcome. I'll explain it in a moment, but for right now, can you say welcome on three and we'll all throw it in together today, all right? One, two, three. Welcome! 
great. Wow, that's a lot to catch. Thanks for doing that. Why do I have the silly hat on and the lay and the noisemaker? And why are we saying welcome? We are welcoming the Holy Spirit. Can everyone say together, Holy Spirit? Holy Spirit. Very good. Now, you remember last week when I was talking about Jesus, and follow along with me, okay? I was saying, up, 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 and away. That's how Jesus left last week. Let's try that all together on three. One, two, three. Up, 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 and away. And now, we have the Holy Spirit, God among us, in this really cool new way. I feel like celebrating. Oh, whoops. <laughs> That's better. You know, the Holy Spirit is very much like this little toy here because when the air is not in it, you know, we can't see it, but then we blow it and it makes that silly, funny noise. We can't see the air, can we? No. We can't see the Holy Spirit either, but we know the Holy Spirit is in our hearts. It's also in our belly. Did you ever get that feeling in your belly like, oh no, I shouldn't be doing this? That's the Holy Spirit talking. If you ever had that feeling in your belly and it said, yeah, yeah, go help that person. That's a good, safe choice. Go help that person. That was the Holy Spirit. That's exciting. That's who we're welcoming today, the Holy Spirit. So on three, let's close with welcome Holy Spirit, okay? On three, one, two, three. Three. Welcome, Holy Spirit. <laughs> Thanks be to God. I just love the hat so much I had to keep it on. Today, now, we will hear from different voices in the congregation. Each is going to respond to a question that I had posed to them, and each undoubtedly will share with you a very Holy Spirit-filled message. The question that they're responding to is, what has the Holy Spirit taught you about faith and life since you've been safer at home? We'll hear those stories now. Hello, my name is Carol Scheffler, and I was asked to share some thoughts with you regarding how I have felt the Holy Spirit during this time. I feel the Holy Spirit when I am looking for comfort or guidance and I like to go to the Psalms and I rely on the Psalms quite a bit for comfort and I feel the Holy Spirit speaking to me through that. Some of my favorites are Psalm 46 verse 10, be still and know that I am God. Um, the second one is Psalm 121, which is only eight verses long. Um, I'm not going to say the whole thing, but um, this is the, the verses that talk about, I will lift my eyes up to the hills from where my help will come. And my help comes from the Lord. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time on and forevermore. Knowing that the Holy Spirit is there to speak to me in my times of concern, I find to be very comforting. The other thing that I like to do during times like this is to concentrate on what I can be grateful for. And I know that there are a lot of people that are homeless at this point, and I am grateful that I have a comfortable home. I have a full pantry, I have a full freezer, and even though this situation came on pretty abruptly, I didn't have to worry about where my next meal was coming from and where I would be sleeping. So that, you know, was a source of comfort, and again, I'm very grateful for it. I'm also grateful for friends that have reached out to us knowing that Keith and I are home pretty much the entire time all week long, um, reaching out with calls or with cards and I've gotten cards from people in the congregation and they have really touched my heart and I appreciate them so much. I'm grateful that I am able to keep working um, on March 13th 
when I went home from work, my employer had already recognized that there was going to be changes needed. And we went home that day knowing that we would be working from home for the near future. At this point, they've decided that we'll be working home from home through at least September 1st. But again, I have employment and I don't have to worry about, will I have enough money to buy groceries next week? And again, I'm grateful. Um, we're also very grateful that our son David has remained well. Um, Keith and I have always been a team in taking care of him and his needs. Uh, we used to have caregivers coming into the home as well to help with some of the heavier tasks with him. And at this point, we just don't feel that it's safe to have someone else coming in. So we have done the best we can. But again, we'll double team and that makes the load easier for each of us to carry. Um, again, trying to find something to be grateful for is much easier than um, concentrating on what could be going on or what could be going wrong. So I would just offer to you that if you're feeling overwhelmed by the events of today, to remember that you have a faith family that's there for you and please reach out if you need anything. And I am ever grateful that you're here as well. Thank you. Greetings, church family. I'd like to start out by saying that I, I miss you all. I, I miss being with you at church. And uh, I've been asked to speak a little bit about how the Holy Spirit uh, has been moving in my life uh, during this uh, safer at home time. Well, you are all my church family. And our church building is our home. But our homes are also our church building. It's also our church. So the Holy Spirit moves in my life uh, every day here uh, with my family, and my immediate family, where we take care of one another. And we love each other as Christ loved uh, the church. And I'd just like to say to everyone that I look forward to the day that we can all get back together and sing together and pray together. But in, in the meantime, the Holy Spirit does move in all of our lives and in everything that we do and uh, that we do stay apart so that eventually we can all be back together. So the Holy Spirit does move in our lives every day and uh, we long for the day that we can be back together physically, but the Holy Spirit is with us every day that we are a part uh, trying to do our uh, part to uh, bring the uh, pandemic to uh, a close. So uh, I pray that uh, we all uh, uh, can uh, find the strength in our, in our hearts and in our lives to uh, weather this storm. So. Uh, I, I, I pray uh, for all of uh, our families and our church family. And uh, may the Lord be with us each day and each evening. God bless. Here's what we're learning about faith and life since Safer at Home and in this transition time. We, we are thankful, thankful for, for the, the extra, extra time. time. The time in our home, with our family, in our yard. The time to rest. My sleep has changed. I sleep more deeply at times, wake up at 3 a.m. at times, take a nap almost daily, fall asleep in the sun, sometimes wearing my jacket and a blanket, blanket wrapped around me. The time to talk, the time to bike, the time to look around at the community and observe the apartments and the single family homes, duplexes, garages, the carports, the porches, the gardens. The gardens, however large or small, the lawns, how many more people are allowing dandelions to take over. I see the yard signs announcing graduations and promotions to the next level of schooling. The thank yous to healthcare heroes and educators. I ponder the meaning of heroes. Although I appreciate the idea of calling out health care workers for the bravery and skills they possess and are putting into action, I wonder about those less seen who are working so hard to make our world more positive more beautiful, more kind, more creative, more healthy. Those, go ahead. Those who decorate their windows with bright colors and messages of hope. 
those to speak to neighbors they've ignored or have been too busy to greet or have conversations with, those who have rekindled relationships with those in their own home, those who are creatively making their isolation more meaningful, those who flood Facebook with information, stories of people different from us, scenarios of a future that's different from our current realities, those who bake bread, I know there's a yeast shortage, who farm sustainable gardens, who offer carry out curbside delivery of meals, those who paint, those who sew, those who ponder, those who worry for themselves and others, those who dream. Here are some of the things that anchor us. The Holy Spirit's everywhere, always. In our homes, the routines and the craziness. In our families, the calm togetherness and the unsettled togetherness. In the breezes and the bird songs. In conversations, virtually and or physically distanced. In our caring and our thinking about others. In knowing that the unknown concerns, issues, fears are not being, t being taken care of alone. We've said for years how parents are the primary educators of their children, how education is a partnership, how the school building isn't as important as the people learning, the people who are teaching, the people who are supporting, and now we're seeing that. We've said the church is the people, not the building. Now we're experiencing that. We love seeing our church family smiling awkwardly in their videos, <laughs> singing their hearts out at home, but being brought together by technology and those who are talented enough and willing to take extra time to use the devices to make our worship experiences better. We love seeing what church members' fam uh, homes look like, what they choose to wear in isolation, where they choose to record their videos, what parts of their decor they choose to show us. We like the feeling of knowing some of us are watching and participating in worship together, while others are choosing to watch when they can or want to. We've always known that our families were important, that we needed more time with each other. The biggest learning for me is that I'm perfectly content not being obligated to go anywhere. I miss the way my job used to be, my students, my colleagues, my routine, but I don't miss the rushing around, the constant deadlines, the way I never had time to complete anything. We miss talking to our church family in person. We miss the hugs. We miss singing in the same room with others, <laughs> but we don't miss the rushing around. We like owning our own time. What we have is enough, and we're anxious about returning to normal. All right. Okay, here we go. Okay, people. Okay. <laughs> this will be uh, right. in the spirits. Uh, in the spirit. Uh, Take five, except uh, like in four, four time. Four. Five and four, got it. Get this thing going here. Yep. Okay. I've been in Wisconsin too Let's long. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, let's see. Yep. <laughs> Where are we at? <laughs> okay, here we go. Yep, here we go. Right here, Jerry. Like say, All right, got it. Here we go. Take five, except in four, four five time. Five and four, got it. Five and four. Four, four time. <laughs> you sure? There's the tone. All right. I think we got it now. Hope so. Well, God, remember, Mike. Maybe we're that about to find out, aren't we? Here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. In the spirit. In the spirit. In the spirit. See if I get in, in the spirit. spirit. In, four, in four, four time. Every time I feel the spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Yes, every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Upon the mountain, my God spoke. Out of God's mouth came fire and smoke. Looked all around me, so fine. I asked my God if all were mine. Every time I feel the Spirit Moving in my heart, I will pray. Yes, every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Oh, Jordan River, chilly and cold, it chills the body, not the soul. There's only one train on this track, it runs to heaven, then right back. Every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Yes, every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Moving in my heart, I will pray. Moving in my heart, I will pray. 
Okay, that might be it. That's a take. As we enter into our time of prayer today on this Pentecost Sunday, we are going to be hearing from different voices and you'll also see some visual prayers as well. And so let us pray. Holy Spirit, today on this Pentecost Sunday, I am praying that the church, the church of Jesus Christ, would not be con complicit in all of these occurrences that have happened lately of racism, that we as a church would not be complicit. Today on this Pentecost Sunday, the Stokowiak family is praying for healing for all who are going through difficult times. We also received prayer requests for Brazil and Mexico, countries that are now being ravaged by COVID-19, and especially those countries where infrastructure was not strong to begin with and now is pressed to the limits. And a prayer request also for the cities of Chicago, Racine, Kenosha, and others close to us with rising incidents of COVID and also cities that are farther from home. Today on Pentecost, we are praying for those who find themselves isolated and alone. The person in a care facility, not able to see their loved ones. The elderly, wondering when their loved ones will actually be able to come into their homes. The students, young and old. Who are missing their friends, teachers, and all that school provided them. Today on Pentecost, I'm praying for all the graduates as they prepare to embark on a new journey. Today for Pentecost, I'm praying a prayer of thanksgiving for grandchildren. The way they help open our eyes to see the treasures we might have forgotten all around us. It could be the sun shining down on us, a rock found in a mulch pile, flowers in bloom, giggles, laughter, curiosity, just all the treasures that fill our hearts with joy. Today on Pentecost, we'll be praying for our friends and family. Today on Pentecost, we are praying for those who are addicted to habit-forming substances, behavior, or activities, and for the parents, family, and friends who are impacted by their loved one's addiction. I want to offer a prayer of gratitude for the optimism in those individuals who found creative ways to celebrate the lives of others, or for those who had special events that occurred during this time of isolation. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. There's a woman who lives in an apartment 
apartment building and it has 10 apartments in that particular building and this woman lives alone and right as the safer at home time started to be imposed she needed to order some toilet paper and she did so online she just she needed toilet paper she wasn't trying to hoard or anything um, and somehow the order got goofed up and she ended up getting two very huge packs of toilet paper and she thought to herself my goodness I'm one person how much do I need this is a time where everyone else needs what I have and so instead of stockpiling it away she decided to go around to all other nine of the apartments in her building and she dropped off on the door a toilet paper roll for each person in that particular apartment so if they had two people it was two rolls of toilet paper that she left for them well a few days later she opened up her door to go get the mail and she was surprised to see that someone had left hand sanitizer on each of the doors then a few days later, someone had set out a table and it was filled with sort of take as you need items, Clorox wipes and other sort of things that folks were needing in those moments. And so the generosity of one grew into the generosity of many more. And that's what happens when we give, when the Holy Spirit stirs within us and we give that generosity inspires others around us to do just that and so today i invite you to give to give in all the ways that you are able with your time your talent your treasure and let's pray over those gifts now what do you say just had to pull it out one more time. And with that, we say thanks be to God. Amen. As a member of First Congregational United Church of Christ, I promise to continue to be the church by participating in worship and serving our neighbors. I promise to be as diligent as I can about my giving to support our ministries. I will e-give, even temporarily, use PayPal, mail my offering, or use the parking lot secure mail slot. I promise to practice social but not spiritual distance, remaining connected with my church, family, and letting Pastor Beth and others know about my health, spiritual, and mental well-being, and my prayer requests. I promise to keep an open mind and willing spirit in engaging church and its ministries in new ways so that, together, we continue to be a vessel of our still-speaking God. I promise to lean on my faith in God and cling to hope to shepherd me through all the uncertainty and unknowns of this wilderness. so glad that you had a chance to worship with us today. Now go forth experiencing the winds, the breezes, the movement of the Holy Spirit in you, among you, and around us all. And may the peace of Christ ever carry you forward. Amen.